I'm gonna begin. I really enjoyed the movie. But I'm just gonna be by talking about directing Jenny Agatha. I mean, not just directing a bit, directing it in a railway children film. Uh, what was that like? And what sort of stage did she sign on? Was she always on board, sort of before you? What, what, was it sort of after you? I, I think um, I think she was tentatively on board before me, um, and but it wasn't a done deal. Um, and there were also scheduling issues. Um, and sorry, you probably don't want to hear about scheduling issues, but I, you know, she was on Call the Midwife and it was during the pandemic and um, you know, we were bubbling our crew and our cast and they were bubbling theirs. And if you take somebody out of a bubble and you can't put them back in and, you know, so there was all of that to, to work out. Um, and, and so it was a bit tricky and, and a bit squeaky bum um, as to whether she would be able to join us uh, right up to the wire, I believe. Um, but then she did come on board um, and then we kind of got into it quite, you know, uh, earnestly uh, around um, her role and, and what would have been happening to her, her character in the intervening 40 years since the original was set. Um, and we worked out quite a lot of stuff that made its way into the script. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I imagine as a director with sort of working on this, you want to get a sense of what it would have been like to have been a child in this time, because obviously you're trying to direct the, the child actors and sort of give them a kind of some sort of di direction, obviously, about, about how to feel. But one of your cast members, Tom Codney, I mean, I just interviewed him and he was a child during this time. Was he helpful at all? Did he speak much about his own experiences being a, a seven or eight year old during the, the Second World War? Or did you sort of try and tackle this through the kind of source material and through the old films? Well, I, I'm sure, you know, Tom might have had those conversations with the kids. Um, but um, as it was structured with the shoot, we had, you know, four weeks uh, with the kids really before any of the adults came on board, any of the adult cast. And I think that was really good just in terms of forming that relationship with the kids, getting their confidence up. Um, but in terms of their kind of understanding of, of that experience, I mean, certainly... Certainly for me, and as a, as a father of, of uh, young children, um, reading the script as I did originally, and there was one line, and you know, Danny's a great light, a writer, but um, uh, where it said something like, "Make no mistake, this is not a sugar-coated scene. It's pretty traumatic for these children getting on these trains, you know, and and saying goodbye to their parents." And it did invite me to think what that would have been like. Um, saying goodbye to my own children at that time and what it would have been like for them going to, to a new environment. And that at, the at a time when we were separated from our families during the pandemic, unable to see relatives. And it just gave it a, a different kind of relevance. And then now looking at it um, and seeing um, the parallels between uh, what's happening in Ukraine um, and those early evacuations of children who were effectively refugees being sent to the countryside. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to watch without making those parallels now. And how was it sort of directing so many children on this? Because, I mean, do they have a kind of... They don't treat this like a job. For them, this isn't like work. There's, I, guess, I imagine this is quite an enjoyable sort of experience for them, or, or for the most part. Is that, does that, is that quite an infectious kind of energy to be on a set? They're not sort of, sort of you know... Um, Sort of the, the industry hasn't already just sort of grounded them down, if that makes sense. They, they kind of everything must be quite new <laughs> and exciting. Is that yeah, is yeah. that is that quite does that spread around the whole kind of casting? Oh, it? definitely. I mean, the, the kids just had such great energy, and and if you've been in a room with them, you you've probably felt some of that. And um, I, the wonderful thing is that they they come from they come from different backgrounds, different levels of experience. Some had done some quite major stuff, maybe maybe quite small roles in major stuff, but you know, big big films and big series, and and some had done pretty much next to nothing or nothing at all. Um, but that didn't really make any difference in, in the way that they worked together, in, in terms of the, the fun that they had and the performances that they delivered. Um, so, no, it was, it was great having that. I think it, it was absolutely infectious. Um, and uh, just, I, I thought, they're brilliant and love work. Yeah. Oh, they were incredible. <laughs> I, I don't try to sort of imagine what I would be like at that age. I just don't think I would... It takes a certain skill, doesn't it, to have that ability just to, even remembering lines, I know it sounds like a really silly thing to say, but I was, I was sort of just overwhelmed by the, the kids in this. I thought they were fantastic. Yeah, no, that's really good to hear. And, and, and of course, it's, it's the railway children. Um, and so they are, it, it's, it's it, yes, it's built around Jenny and, and her story, um, but they are the new generation.
I felt there was a real sort of Spielbergian quality to this, especially in that final act when the I'll kids kind of <laughs> when they sort, when they take matters into their own hands. Was was that is it, was that a conscious influence on you? The kind of films of Spielberg, the kind of the films like he sort of ET, or is he just so ingrained into the kind of fabric of storytelling that if you make a movie like this, it almost just comes without even realizing that that kind of influence? Uh, well, it's interesting. I'm not sure. I mean, I, you know, certainly. You know, I'm influenced by the, the the great family films of of my own childhood, um, and I think lots of those they do have in common a, a theme of children taking things into their own hands, um, and children actually taking risks and at times putting themselves in danger, um, sometimes for the right reasons, often for the right reasons, and reasons that the adults around them either don't understand or just aren't on board for because of whatever reason. Um, and um, and you know whether it's Spielberg or you know whether it's whether it's Stand by Me you know there's there's lots of films that that kind of have that that theme of of children kind of going on an adventure going on a journey um, and with Stand by Me actually along a, a railway track and that's a real kind of rites of passage metaphor as well so um, so yeah I think those sort of journeys are often really quite important physical journeys in in, in a film like this and I was talking to someone outside and we were talking about how it just strikes a real perfect balance this in tonally not talking down to children. It's sort of, it, it, it manages to be a film that can appeal to children without in any way being patronising in its tone. Was that quite a tricky thing to get right? And do you think it's just, just learning the right voice in some ways that the movie would have to, to speak to an, an audience like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I hope I would never make a film and we wouldn't make a film that, that does patronise children. I mean, I suppose it's a rule. Like, if you're going to make a film that's for children and families, don't make a film that, that patronises children um, because children know when they're being patronised. Um, but also, uh, children are often dealing with or exposed to things around them that are, that are quite difficult and, and have a, a greater understanding than we might think in, in those situations, but also have a clearer and clean perspective where they can see something might be accepted societally, but to children they can see that this is wrong and they're almost ahead of their time in that way. And I think that's the case with the one of the storylines in the film. Mm. What, 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 talking to storylines, I mean, we, so when I was a kid, all the movies that would sort of be based around the kind of wartime would be about the uh, us against the enemy. That was the kind of idea. But this was actually about there can be enemies from between allies, you know, and was that quite an interesting kind of theme for you to explore and to sort of, to give to a sort of generation of kids who might not have seen that explored too often? Because I think there is, yeah, it's usually just fighting against Nazism, but this is actually about the conflicts you can face of amongst yourselves, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I think and that's why, and also for, for the children, it, it doesn't make sense to them. You know, what they're, what they're being told, what they're being seen, the, the racism um, that they, uh, that they're being told about, that they um, hear about through Abe's story, and Abe going through that experience himself, that's not something that would have been uh, unknown to him at all. Um, but for the children seeing that, they, they can see, A, that it doesn't make sense. They can't understand it as well. Um, uh, but I think it's also important to, to bring that story of the uh, of, of black GIs in, in the UK um, who sort of lived under Jim Crow-style um, laws within the American army um, to a wider audience as well because people don't necessarily know that story or see it as part of the history um, of the war. Uh, my final question is, because when I was a kid, I watched The Railway Children. Uh, my mum showed it to me. And it was that film that, I know it's a bit of a cliche thing to say, but it made me cry so much. It was that kind of tearjerker that I've actually struggled to go back and watch again <laughs> because it just made me cry so much as a kid. What was your equivalent? Or it could have been The Railway Children, but did you have a film that always just made you cry so much that you always, it was almost overwhelming in its sadness? <laughs> oh, that's tricky. I mean, I'm just trying to think. I mean, off the top of my head, I, I don't know about one that, 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 you know, made me kind of, um, blub on a you know repeat basis, but I cried with noise. <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, obviously ET, I mean, and I think that it's it's interesting that that experience, that first memory of crying in a cinema, and actually most of mine are or the ones that I can remember are the, the sort of ones that that are, are quite unifying in that most of us when we went to CET as children, cried. Um, I think I have a very early memory of crying in Bambi as well, <laughs> which is another one that, you know, gets everyone as well. But I think that's that's the point of cinema, isn't it? It, it kind of unifies us um, in our emotions and in, in, in the way that we kind of learn about our emotions as children and learn about 
loss and grief and and those sorts of things as well. Um, and you know, we, we we don't shy away from those themes in the railway children return either. Thank you so much for your time, Sam. It's been a pleasure speaking. Pleasure. To you. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.